What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. We're back with another big question about a forward. Apparently, people don't like looking at the defensive questions. Uh, We've done Brent Burns. We've done Mark Edward Vlasic. And today, we'll be looking at Timo Meyer, our beautiful Swiss superstar. Uh, and we're gonna look at we'll look at something really important because he's gonna have uh, an incredibly important 2022 2023 for San Jose and especially their long term future. So uh, we got it. We got to check it out and see what he's up to and have a little debate. Your locked on sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our overlord, Gamblor, at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. I'm your host, Kyle Demetrius. Back with me, as always, is JD, the Oysters Kilpatrick to my shrimp cocktail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, I no went to a, I went to a seafood festival today. Nice. Uh, I haven't been had seafood in a while uh say what's your favorite one i i do like actually i like oysters raw that's my favorite way to consume oh yeah oysters. i'm going on thursday actually to an oyster bar it's great what nice. what's your what's your preferred topping on the on the raw oh i just suck them down oh really <laughs> just straight raw dog them yep oh i go with a little hot sauce usually maybe a little vinegar hmm, very good that's not too bad uh a little cocktail sauce isn't bad either but usually i'm just like that just gets in the way <laughs> raw dog in the oyster? Oh, okay fair enough yeah it's just slowing me down so uh yeah. <laughs> the toothpicks will just slow me down <laughs> uh, uh that or oyster uh oyster rockefeller is good too where you do uh like oyster on a half shell and then like some spinach some parmesan cheese and bacon on top yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but so, well, I, I prefer Oysters Kilpatrick, um, mm-hmm. but that's like all the same thing. There's also an Oysters Casino, uh, which I think is close to Oysters Rockefeller, but they're all they're all good. I like Oysters, little snot rocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, who doesn't love sucking one down? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the only time that it's gross is when you get too much of the shell on your lip or like there's like too much like seawater or whatever, and it's really salty and gross. Yeah, um, and you're just like, yeah, what have I like, done oh, with my life? Yeah, yeah. Um, can have lots of seafood on Thursday, though. I'm excited. A man who's probably had a lot of fine seafood in his life. 1,000%. Timo Meyer. Yes. And our big question is, can Timo Meyer continue to be elite? Kind of a, kind of a generic question, but a it's a million one. dollar, <laughs> well, it's a $10 million question when it comes to Timo because he is on the last year of his uh, bridge RFA contract deal, but... When they signed it, it didn't take him into UFA years. It stopped short of his RFA years. So next year, he will make a cap hit of $6 million. So the same as the last couple of years. Um, his real salary is $10 million uh, because back when he signed it, yeah, just getting that bread. Uh, back when he signed it, you can... He needs to buy shirts with no buttons. <laughs> <laughs> they, should, they should be cheaper. Uh, back when he you signed it, you would, you would think that, but they're not. They're probably more expensive. No. It's like how you get like ripped, ripped jeans and they're more expensive. Oh, yeah. Uh, but back when he signed his contract, it was still legal to really front dive and back end the uh, the contract where you can have him making less money up at the front and then have this big qualifying at the end. And he's kind of the impetus for the change because uh, his was regressive where he makes $10 million this year. But all that leads us to a place where at the end of next season, uh, in order to keep his rights, uh, you have to send him a qualifying offer. His qualifying offer will be $10 million. Uh, he's well within his rights to sign that uh, for a one-year deal uh, and make $10 million. The Sharks don't necessarily have to pay that to him because they can get around it by signing him to an early extension, thus eliminating the whole RFA dance and the qualifying offer dance. He also, as an RFA, uh, if he doesn't come up with a deal with San Jose early and kind of wants to see what happens or San Jose, just the new GM just wants to take it in the summer, he could be offer sheeted by someone, uh, as we've seen in the last few seasons with um, Yesperia Kotkaniemi and 
who was the other guy that they did? Sebastian Ajo. Yeah. Um, uh, the Montreal Carolina thing. So there is that risk. I do think they will try to sign him early because I think the Sharks believe that this Timo is the Timo that they are getting going forward. Yeah. So let's talk about Timo this year and then kind of compare it to the, next, the last couple of years. So Timo this year um, absolutely ruled. Timo this year was amazing. So, um, of course, our friends over at Evolving Hockey with their fun little things. Uh, 94 percentile offensive juggernaut this year. Just dominating people, uh, even strength. And this is what Timo does, right? He's He's been a guy who drives offense, and this year he drove an insane amount of offense. Um, defense, whatever, you don't care. You're his job is to drive offense and to score goals, and he's very good at that. So I mean, um, but his defense there isn't like bad. It's 50, 50th percentile. Who cares? Yeah, that's he's fine. just he's not he's not really hurting you. He's not helping you. Uh, no, nope. which so, which is fine. That's yeah. And if you play, or, you know, playing him with Hurdle, who can be more defensive oriented, um, you know, that's fine. Like you don't need a whole line of shutdown people. That's not you're not paying Timo Meyer to shut people down. You're paying him to score goals and be mm -hmm. super sick. So um, definitely an improvement over the last couple years where, you know, Timo this year, he, he finished the season with uh, 35 goals, 41 assists in 77 games for that. Just missed his point per game at 76 points in 77 games. Um, had a nice distribution offensively where it was um, his 23 of his, of his 35 goals were even strength which is what you like to see a majority of them where he's not just, you know, dominating on, on the power play. Um, and then on, um, and then he had 12 of them power play zero shorthanded and then assists the same thing, 35 even strength assists compared to six power play assists. Um, Cause he's definitely the finisher on the power play, but so it's, it's good that he's driving offense, you know, on five on five. And it's not just, you know, kind of boosting his numbers through the power play. But I think the big question is, is this the team Omar that we can expect going forward, especially after the last couple of years where last year in his 54 games, he had 12 goals, 19 assists and 31 points in 54 games. And the year before that, which was, he led the team in scoring, but I mean, it was still, I would, we can debate if that was a down year or not, where he had 22 goals, 27 assists, 49 points in 70 games on a super bad team. That was cut by shut. Uh, the season was cut short by COVID. So that's the debate. Which team of mine are we going to get going forward? Yeah. And I mean, his 35 goals this year would have been 25th or what would have been. It was tied for 25th. Um, and it is bad. <laughs> like this. Yeah. The on a, on a ter terrible Sharks team. Yeah. It was awful. Yeah. Um, which is pretty good. Like 35 goals, is a lot of goals. And then his 76 points uh, was tied for 42nd in the league. So that's like first line stuff. That's, that's really good stuff. Um, guys right ahead of him were like Robert Thomas, David Pasternak, Chris Kreider, Jenny Kuznetsov, Debrinket, Zuccarello, Robertson, Brad Marchand had 80 points. William Nylander had 80 points. Um, Zabanajad, Aho, the better. Tarasenko, Reinhardt. Like the, the guys ahead of him were like, guys you think of uh, for the most part that are really really good other than a guy like chris Kreider who had 50 million goals uh, out of nowhere so he's in good company would i if i was a betting man would i say he's going to do it next year uh i think so and you could probably find some sort of team odds over at our partners at Bet online because they continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info like timo meyer news Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, like Timo Meyer developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, where uh, as of this recording, the Suns just absolutely bowed out of the playoffs in a massive choke job to the Mavericks, which is sick. Uh, Major League Baseball's on. Albert Pujols, uh, right now, as we record this, is recording his first ever pitching appearance, uh, which is sick when you think about it. There's fights. UFC happened. There was a fight night last night. Uh there's always UFC going on. There's always boxing going on. Uh, there's NFL futures up that you can bet on NFL futures. Bet hammer online. the over on the Dolphins wins total. And hammer the under on Tua being good. Bet online is your continued source for all your sport, wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. 
The best part about that is that I can make that two equip and not see JD's face because I had the ad up over the video. Uh, so that's a nice little treat for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dolphins, uh, the Dolphins are just signing everybody. Yeah, literally, literally just everybody. They traded for Tyreek Hill. Uh, who else did they get? Uh, they uh, they just signed Melvin Ingram today. Uh, yes. So to help out with their pass rush, yeah, they fixed their offensive line. Get some playmakers. It's gonna be fun. So, um, the Patriots probably gonna be mediocre. The Bills are the Bills, and uh, the Jets the are Jets gonna be bad. Suck. <laughs> they had a good draft. They had a really good draft, but yeah. Sure, good. but uh, how many times have you heard that before? Yes. Zach Wilson is not the answer. Maybe so. they should bring back Vinny Testaverde. The <laughs> salad days of the New York Jets. But anyway, <laughs> team. Uh, the thing with Timo is, is that you look at his season this year, you're like, awesome, this is great, and when you go back to 2018, 19, when he had a 30 goal season as well and had 66 points in 78 games, you're like, awesome. But that 49 point season in 70 games is like, uh, uh, granted he did leave the team of points, but like it's that, that, that team was bad, but like, yeah, which it's, it's tough when it's like you get two good seasons and then two mediocre to bad seasons with team of Meyer. It's like, which which team of my are we going to be getting from here on out? And I tend to lean that they are we're going to have good team of Meyer. Um, our our favorite player, Evander Kane, I think took a lot of opportunity from Timo when he was here. If you look at like their play styles, they're both power forward. I'm going to run over people get to, get to the net. You know they they kind of play the same spot on the the power play, and I think. Evander Kane kind of, you know, Evander Kane was on the ice. Evander Kane was very good for the Sharks, um, you know, during his time here. And he he produced really well, et cetera, et cetera. But I, you wonder if his production cost Timo Meyer production. Yeah. And somebody had to, like, Evander Kane got put into power play one. And uh, he, I think he played on the penalty kill as well. And he yeah. obviously was on line one. Uh, and, and in those top roles and was a go-to person when they needed points and somebody had to step in to fill that void and Timo obviously did. So I don't think there's any reason to doubt why Timo would all of a sudden just not continue to get those opportunities. It would be weird if after the season he's just had, they would be like, okay, well, you're not on power play one anymore. And <laughs> Fourth we're gonna, Timo Myers back. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to put, we're going to put Kevin LeBanc in the top six yeah. and then we're going to try out. Maybe you can play with like Couture and, I don't know, balsers or something like that on, on a weird line too, or you can go balance out the lines. Like even if, even if the new coach or if there is a new coach or Bob wants to do a, a line balancing act where maybe the third line is more of a scoring line uh, and kind of balance out your Barabanovs and um, Eklund and Bordalo and, and Meyer and those mm-hmm. kind of guys. I don't see why Timo wouldn't still be on line one. Um, yeah, it would be it would be kind of foolish. So I, I don't think the opportunities are going to go away for him. It's just a matter of. Is this a blip? And I, I like you said, with his goal scoring distribution, it, it doesn't seem like this is a blip because we've seen it before. This isn't his first good season. This is really, truly yeah. his, this is his best season, but it's his second really good season. Both times he scored 30 goals. Um, and I don't think I don't think it would be unrealistic to expect him to have. 30 goals, 30 assists year in, year out. He should be um, close to an 80 point player from here to the next few years, you would think. Right? That, that's what I said. Like 30, yeah. 30, 60, but like he had 35 and 41, which is 76, which is great. Um, I don't see why he can't do be 35, 45. Um, if, if the Sharks yeah. do get better, obviously it's a little bit easier to come by assists. So if he could be 35 goals, 55 assists, um, just by virtue of the Sharks actually scoring some goals. Uh, which puts him at 90 points. Uh, he's going to get paid like it. So yeah. <laughs> I don't, uh, I, I, think, I just don't, I just don't see why, why, why he would take a step back. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see like with the whole line balance, because the Sharks were definitely a, a one line team last year with, with the bear band off hurdle Meyer line. And then you would hope to get some scoring from your Couture, Benito, everybody else until until the borderlow line kind of solidified itself i think at the at the back end of the season there but and like, even that was only like four games <laughs> yeah that was uh eight, borderlow played eight games but anyway like uh uh 
I you wonder though, like, because you've always talked about like how you like when teams build in pairs, right? Where it's like you have a, a center and a, a winger, and you feel like that hurdle Timo um, is a good pairing. But then, like, do you put Eklund there, or do you put LeBanc there, or like I think trying to figure out how to balance, or do you just keep Barabanov, which has been they've been a productive line, but then you wonder if you're you're going to run to the same situation or next year it's there. They're just if that that top line isn't driving at stuff, then they're just not going to be able to score. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I mean, I don't. I don't know why you'd go away from Barabanov, Hurdle, Meyer, especially because if you're going to rely on Eklund, uh, Bordalo, hopefully Dalen is back. If you're going to rely on some of these guys, LeBanc actually is, is a big missing piece here. If you're going to rely on these guys to provide you offense. Then they left wing to do it. I, I guess pop six I guess Nick Benino. You... <laughs> he was uh, scoring like cra- dude. He was scoring like crazy at the season when he got moved to the winger. But yeah, yeah. I mean, like if that works, yeah. it works. But I, ideally, I think size. maybe maybe, maybe yeah. you do swap down Meyer down to Couture's wing, and you have Barabanov, Hurdle, LeBanc, and then you go like Eklund, Couture, Meyer, uh, and see if you can do that or drop Barabanov down. But I think I think at the beginning of the season, especially because they're going to want to come out of the gates looking a lot better, you just go with Barabanov, Hurdle, Meyer, uh, and have them lead the charge. Yeah. You know what the best thing Timo should be doing as he gets ready to get paid? Uh, eating protein. Mm-hmm. And in in bar form. In bar form is the the best form to eat anything. <laughs> right now, Bill Bar. Actually, they just sent us these birthday cake puffs. Not me. They are delicious. Imagine dipping your finger into a plastic tub of birthday cake frosting. Then it opened your eyes and realizing that was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. That's what it's like eating a birthday cake uh, puff from Built. So I got mine this weekend. Like I said, they are amazing. If you haven't tried the puffs, let me tell you a little secret about them. Because that's what friends do. And we're all friends here on the Locked on Sharks podcast. It's a chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar. Yeah, you heard me. Delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. And they have a other amazing flavor. So if birthday cake isn't your thing, they have cinnamon churro, they have banana cream puff. You guys know we are a 100% pro cream puff, cream pie podcast. So go check them out uh, over at Built.com. Go get the birthday cake puffs now. Uh, use the promo code LOCK15, get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Now, the $10 million question. Do you, you obviously signed Timo early to get around the qualifying offer. What do you do though? Do you go just the full hog? Whole hog, eight, eight, eight years? I think so. It's I would rather do the eight years with him, especially because since he's only he's only twenty five. He's turning twenty six at the beginning of the year, and we we so you get age twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. So you get of those eight years, you get five of them still while he's in his like prime primo prime. Era. Yes. If he's truly really that good, then you probably are going to squeeze thirty one out of him, maybe even thirty two. But his contract is only ending when he's thirty three years old. That's the perfect time to get out right there, because then you can, especially with Timo, he hasn't had much of an injury history. It's not like Hurdle with his knees were that are you know made of glass right now, or, or Carlson where his groin exploded. Um, yeah, he hasn't had an injury history. It's, I, I think, you give him the full eight years, and you just you assume that you're getting the uh, an 80 point season or 80 point player for the next you know four or five six seasons from him like, especially if, if Eklund is as good as we think Eklund's gonna be oh god could you imagine Eklund and Timo just oh yeah and like Mark Edward Vlasic was 31 when he signed his uh his fat extension uh Logan Couture was 30 when he signed his big extension um Brent I Burns. just don't think yeah, I don't like, Brent Burns was Brent Burns was already like 70. Yeah. <laughs> uh I just don't this is the perfect time to sign it. Yeah, this is the kind of guy that you eat up all those years on because you you're, you're not buying up bad years at the end. If anything, you're gonna have one, two, two maybe, at the most, but like yeah. not really. You're you're getting all but even the- then you're probably like, okay, if he's like a 50 or 60 point player, that's like you know, it's like sweet, yeah. Right? And even though he could still be really good, like yeah. 
like there's 31 year olds that are really good in the NHL all the time. It's not like we're yep. saying he's dead. He's probably going to decrease his production, but if he's maybe he, maybe he just ascends and he's like an 80 point guy now for the all eight years. Like that happens. We're not saying it's going to happen. Um, just realistically, it probably go down a little bit, but if he goes down from like an 80, 85 point player to, like you said, a 50 or 60, you're still laughing. Um, especially cause you had all those good years. Mm-hmm. The big question here is, would he want eight years and the stability or would he want to go with like a four year deal and bet on himself and try to cash in again? That's maybe yeah. That's five year deal. If, if he goes with a five year deal, he'll be, he'll be 31 and then he can maybe try to cash in again. Yeah. That's, that's the tricky part. And even then I would be okay with that too. Cause then yep. you could figure out what to do by then your cap situation is going to be a lot better. You can figure out what to do with your, you know, if he's still producing, you can resign him then, you know, if you want to try to do another, you know, four or five year deal then. But yeah, I think um, this should be one of the biggest priorities for the Sharks. This, this off season is the team of Meyer. Well, I like, think they can't actually sign him until later. Like, yeah. I don't think they can actually do it in this summer. Uh, I'm not quite sure how. Uh, Why can't she? He couldn't sign an extension this off season. Uh, well, no, I think it has to be like after like December 1st or something. Um, when can you sign an RFA extension early? We'll have to ask somebody. Um, here we go. Actually, I've got it right here. Uh, oh, it's from 2014. That's not going to help. Uh, <laughs> God, I wish it was, this was just like, just like a, a thing, but I don't think, I don't think he can like rock into this summer. Um, and uh ooh, NHL CBA facts. Here we go. Thanks, Cap Friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, what is an understood? What is an RF? Okay. Uh after the season starts. Uh yeah, I don't know. I will just ask Cap Friendly on, on online. But I don't think I don't think like June first or July first, whenever the stupid new season starts, I don't think you can just like instantly sign him to an extension. I think you gotta wait a certain period. Mm-hmm. Um plus they have other shit to do this season. And he's under contract. So it's not like it's not like he's going anywhere. It's yeah, not like they have to have to get it done, or he's a UFA. Like he's an RFA. So at the end of the day, he's they, they own his rights. Do yeah, you yeah. Think, just put it out there. I mean, because they dang, there was talk whispers that he might have been moved last off season. Do you percentage chance that he, if you know, they maybe they realize they're not going to be able to get a contract with him. You know, maybe he's secretly unhappy. We don't know. I'm just speculating right here. Percentage chance that he's just like that he gets traded this off season. I mean, you can never say none. Um, yeah. but like if the 5%. devils who have the second pick are just like, did we ever confirm if that devil's thing was just completely made up or was it real? Cause I'm pretty sure it's was just completely fabricated. I thought it was Kevin weeks. Who's pretty good at this stuff. Uh, but I mean, it, the whispers were out there. I thought the Kevin weeks said that the devils wanted to make a trade. Never say anything about Timo. It and was then, Nick Merkley. <laughs> and then, was, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Nick Merkley did. Yeah. But I think yeah, it was, there was I a, think, I think, there was there was whispers that he might have been available, but I'm pretty sure those whispers were completely made up by Kevin Kurtz, like 100. Hey. percent He doesn't follow me anymore. I checked uh, on Twitter, <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure he just made those up on Twitter just for fun because uh, mm-hmm. nobody I've ever talked to knew that this was happening. Um, and Kevin Weeks did get it right. I mean, Nick Merkley was traded. Remember at the deadline when there was the long-awaited uh, San Jose <laughs> traded the Hopper? <laughs> <laughs> Good. It just turned out to be like a completely meaningless trade. But yeah. okay, what do you obviously the the um, evolving wild uh, cap projection is coming out this week? I think. They won't. Timo won't be on there yet because he's not a free agent this year. It'll be. Like, oh, ugh. Ugh. what do you think the Sharks do? Uh, I would say they probably float around the the hurdle contract that eight by eight type of figure just because Timo has. Pre- Produced better numbers than Hurdle, but Hurdle's been more consistent over his time. Um, I know Timo is younger, but I would I would think that's probably a starting point is the Hurdle eight by eight. Starting point. I don't think I don't think Timo signs that though. I think Timo would want much more money because yeah. why wouldn't an eight by eight? Why wouldn't you just take the one year ten million dollar deal and be like, hey, let's figure this out later and make ten million dollars yeah. again? I, I mean, personally, uh, do you think he, he gets a Hurdle has never had a season as good as. <laughs> yeah, but he's been more Hurdles. productive. That's how, you know, uh, like... He really hasn't, though. Mm. Uh, Hurdle had 25 points in 37 games, then 31 and 82, then 46 and 81, then 22 and 49, 46 and 79, 
74 and 77, which is still less than uh, yeah. Timo's. 36 and 48, 43 and 50, and then 64 and 82. Uh, I mean, his uh, da, 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 his points. Uh, where is points per 60? Why is this not? Uh, yeah, Timo's points per 60. Points per game. So, so um, Hurdle's points per game is 0. 0.66 mm-hmm. um, for his career. Yeah, and I'm not trying to slag on uh, slag on Hurdle, but I mean Hurdle brings value in, in other ways yes, um, yeah. with his defense and stuff. But I mean, when you look at the seasons, uh, <laughs> Timo's at 0. 0.67 um, mm-hmm. points per game, so he's a little <laughs> bit above, uh, but he's had less seasons. So yeah, I mean smaller sample size. <laughs> it's not like like he so maybe an Timo's, eight by you start with an eight by nine and go from there, or do you think Timo gets over ten million a year? Uh, I don't know. That's a that's a tricky thing. So seventy six points, and then Hurdle's second best season was this last this past one at sixty four. Mm-hmm. But Meyer's second best season was sixty six, <laughs> and then so cool. Meyer's best season, third best season is forty nine. Hurdle's third best season is forty six twice. Like I yeah, they're, I just they're pretty similar. Yeah. yeah, I just don't I just don't see how Timo looks at an eight by eight and it's the same as Couture and. Uh, uh, hurdle and goes yeah sure I, I i purely from a timo standpoint i, I yeah you've got to think he wants 10 million dollars a year i mean would he would you would you be happy with eight years at 9.75 million sure i think i mean that's a lot of money though but i mean you have to uh, i think you got to pay the guy so if he's going to be your star leading the charge going in then you kind of got to pay him yeah i mean i guess you're gonna have to it's gonna be tough these next couple of years uh but then you, you you hope that you know three years from now that the cap kind of cleans itself up and yeah for sure yeah. and if san jose can 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 actually move a burns or a carlson then that makes this thing a whole lot easier so yeah yep so two more I, th- I, th- I, th- I think we're looking down the barrel of an eight by ten Ooh. why not it's cash money I, it it just makes too much sense to just lock him up uh, yeah. for eight years if he if he wants to obviously yeah if he doesn't want to then uh, it's gonna be tough then they'll trade him but I I don't yeah I don't I think he's an eight by ten is pretty enticing it's eighty million dollars to him and security you're always gonna get well, that. there's no way you're not getting that. <laughs> <laughs> can't confirm it's actually eight hundred million dollars <laughs> yes. uh, we're using we're using uh, metric math but anyway Ooh, if you have Timo if you have if you have Timo Meyer thoughts. Uh, even if they're thirsty thoughts, we don't mind. Uh, you can let us know on the internet. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Locked on Sharks. YouTube, Locked on Sharks. We're getting very close to 800. I think we're like we're 10 five away. Oh, five away. And yeah, once uh, we hit 800, we'll do a Martin Jones bobblehead giveaway. Guaranteed to get you William Eklund draft pick. <laughs> it's a fun little keepsake. 20 years it from is. now, you'll be like, remember Martin Jones? I remember <laughs> Martin Jones. Um Locked on Sharks at gmail.com, uh, Amazon, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcast, Locked on Sharks. JD, his sunburn has gone away. Uh, he's at my fry hole. Kyle, at Kyle Demetrius. Thank you guys for making us your first San Jose Sharks listen. Go check out any of the other amazing podcasts on the Locked on Network, such as the Locked on NHL, as the playoffs continue to trudge on. Go Panthers and Joe Thornton, uh, or any other amazing podcast on the Lockdown Network, such as Lockdown Mavericks. Bye, friends. Luca. <laughs>